You are doing everything right. You are eating clean. You are crushing high-intensity interval training sessions. You are cutting calories. Yet, when you look in the mirror, your body looks puffy, inflamed, and stubborn fat just hangs onto your midsection. I spent 12 years in this exact cycle. I was the definition of healthy on paper, but my body was chronically stressed, bloated, and refusing to change. It wasn't until I stopped doing the five specific things that the fitness industry told me were essential that I finally leaned out. If you feel like you are working harder than everyone else but seeing zero results, you need to watch this. These are the five healthy habits that are likely keeping you fat. The first habit is the most controversial because it is sold as the holy grail of fat loss. High Intensity Interval Training, or HIT. Logic tells us that if you sweat more, you burn more. I used to run 10 kilometers, do sprints, and push my heart rate to the max daily. Science says HIT is efficient, and it is. But there is a hidden cost. Cortisol. Cortisol is your body's stress hormone. When you combine the stress of daily life with the physical stress of excessive high-intensity cardio, your cortisol levels remain chronically elevated. High cortisol leads to water retention and specifically tells your body to store fat around the abdominal area as a survival mechanism. I was technically burning calories, but I was also triggering a hormonal environment that made fat loss impossible. I was inflamed. The fix was counterintuitive. I stopped the running. I stopped the burpees. I replaced them with simple long one-hour walks. This is called LISS, Low Intensity Steady State Cardio. By lowering the intensity, I lowered my cortisol. The inflammation subsided. The water weight dropped. And my body finally felt safe enough to let go of the fat stores. If you are feeling puffy despite killing it in the gym, try doing less. This leads directly into the second habit which goes against everything gym culture tells you, and that is the obsession with heavy lifting. Now, before the comments section explodes, hear me out. Resistance training is incredible, but the narrative that heavy lifting is the only way to tone up is not a one-size-fits-all truth. I was told that to get the lean model look, I had to squat and deadlift heavy. So I did. I was leg pressing hundreds of pounds, but instead of getting that sleek, elongated look I wanted, my thighs got bulkier and my body felt constantly swollen from muscle tear and repair. We have to acknowledge bio-individuality. Some women respond to heavy hypertrophy training by putting on significant muscle mass quickly. If that is your goal, great. But it wasn't mine. I wanted a specific aesthetic, but I was training for a bodybuilding aesthetic. I quit the heavy weights and switched to Pilates and bodyweight exercises. I focused on time under tension and stability rather than max load. The result? My muscles lengthened, the bulk subsided, and my physique completely transformed. It wasn't about weakness, it was about specificity. Don't let the internet bully you into a training style that doesn't align with your aesthetic goals. And speaking of things the internet bullies you into, let's talk about the third habit. Obsessive macro tracking. Every fitness influencer tracks their food. It is seen as the ultimate tool for control. I was obsessed. I knew every gram of protein, carb, and fat that entered my mouth. But here is the problem. My brain was so fixated on the numbers that I lost connection with my body. Tracking became a source of anxiety. Anxiety, again, raises cortisol. Plus, the restriction created a scarcity mindset. Because I had a limit, I wanted the forbidden foods even more. I would crave chocolate and ice cream constantly because my app said I couldn't have them. When I stopped tracking and switched to intuitive eating, something strange happened. The cravings vanished. This isn't magic. It is reverse psychology. When you give yourself unconditional permission to eat, food loses its power over you. You stop binging because you know you can have that chocolate whenever you want. If you are exhausted by MyFitnessPal and food scales, this is your sign to take a break. You can be lean without being a mathematician. Before we get to the habit that destroyed my digestion, if you are resonating with this concept of low-stress weight loss and want to join a community that values sustainability over suffering, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. We are rewriting the rules of fitness here, and I don't want you to miss the next guide on hormonal health. Now, habit number four, the demonization of food groups. At some point, I cut out everything. No gluten, no dairy, no fruit because of sugar, no fats. I thought I was being clean, but I was actually wrecking my gut microbiome. 
By restricting so many food groups, I developed intolerances I never had before. My digestion was a mess, and I was constantly bloated. Bloating can add 2 to 3 inches to your waistline, making you look like you have gained fat when it is actually just gas and inflammation. When I started eating intuitively, I reintroduced these foods. I stopped fearing bread. I stopped fearing butter. And guess what? My digestion healed. The bloating disappeared. Unless you have a medically diagnosed allergy, cutting out entire food groups is often unnecessary and counterproductive. A diverse diet leads to a diverse microbiome, which is crucial for a healthy metabolism. Stop fearing food. Food is fuel, not the enemy. And finally, the fifth habit. And this is the most dangerous one. The severe calorie deficit. We are taught, eat less, move more. So when I stalled, I ate even less and moved even more. I was essentially starving myself while training like an athlete. This triggered metabolic adaptation. Your body is a survival machine. When energy intake drops too low for too long, your body doesn't burn fat. It conserves energy. It downregulates your thyroid. It lowers your body temperature and it stops non-essential functions to keep you alive. You enter a state where you are eating 100 calories but not losing weight because your body has adjusted your expenditure down to match it. I was fighting biology, and biology always wins. The solution was terrifying but necessary. I had to eat more. By increasing my calories to maintenance, I signaled to my body that there was no famine. This lowered the stress response, revved up my metabolism and allowed my body to finally release the stored fat it was holding on to for emergencies. You cannot starve your way to a sustainable physique. You have to fuel the machine. Looking back, those 12 years of struggle weren't because I wasn't working hard enough. It was because I was working too hard in the wrong direction. I was fighting my body instead of working with it. Fitness shouldn't feel like a punishment. If you are tired, puffy and frustrated, try pulling back. Stop the hit. Eat the sandwich. Lift lighter if you want to, and give your body a break. You might just find that doing less is actually the key to achieving more. Trust your body signals, not just the trends. See you in the next video.